Aside from images, probably the most common type of display object that you'll create is text. So I've already got my donut image loaded into my project, and here it is at the simulator. And what we'll do is we'll create some text that serves as the title for our fictional company that will be used throughout this particular course, which is a donut company called Donut Mogul. And so we'll head back to the main.lua file of our project, and underneath the creation of the donut image, we'll create some new text. We'll start by typing local title text equals display dot new text and open and close some parentheses. The first argument of the new text method is the text that you'd like to display. So we'll open a string and type donut mogul. The second and third arguments of this particular method set the left and top distance of this object. I won't be positioning objects in this way in the course. Instead, I'll be using their x and y properties. So I'll set these two arguments to zero. So the second argument, comma, zero, and the third argument, comma, zero. Now the fourth argument of this method is the argument that accepts a font. So I'll type comma system.native font. And system.native font basically tells Corona to use whatever the default font is that Corona will use according to the device that it is employed on. Most of the time, it's the Verdana font. Then for the final argument, I'll type comma, and then the size of the font, here 36. Now I'll hit the simulator and refresh, and we can see Mogul in the top left corner, and just as it had earlier with the donut, it is positioning this particular asset in its center point. So we'll move it so that it appears below the donut. Before we do that, let's go back to the positioning of the donut on its Y axis, and we'll change it to give the text a little bit of room. So I'll erase the assignment for donut.y, and instead, I'll open some parentheses and type screen.height divided by six, and outside the parentheses, times two. So what I'm doing here is I am taking the height of the screen and dividing it into six equal parts. And that's the screen.height divided by two portion of line 16. Then I'm setting the donut to appear at the second part, or at least that's the center of the donut, because remember, the anchor for the donut is at the center of the image. So I'll save that, head to the simulator and refresh, and you can see the donut has moved up a little bit on the screen. Now I'll set the positioning of the title text. So underneath title text at line 18, I'll type title text dot x equals screen dot center dot x and title text dot y equals and then open some parentheses underscore screen dot height divided by six so I'm dividing the screen into six parts as I did earlier then outside of the parentheses times 3.5 so here I'm putting it just at the third division but a little bit below that so save and head back to the simulator and refresh and there we have our company name underneath the donut. Now it's a little bland right now, I don't particularly like this font, so let's look at how to change the font for some text. Heading back to main.lua, just above title text, I'm gonna type local font equals, then open a string. And here I'll type American typewriter bold, and notice the dash between typewriter and bold. This is a font that's available on iOS. If I'm using Android, it won't be available. So I want to tell Corona, if you don't have this font available, default to system.native font. And the way that we'll do that is after the string, I'll type or, and then system.native font. Now line 19, where system.native font is, I'll replace that with font. So we've created a font variable, and this variable is set according to whatever platform Corona is running in. If that platform has American Typewriter Bold available, that's the font that will be used. Otherwise, it'll default to system.native font. I'll head back to the simulator and refresh, and now we can see the type is much more attractive, and at least in my eyes, it looks like type appropriate for a donut company. As Corona is a multi-platform SDK, there are lots of different fonts available for lots of different devices and lots of different platforms, and this can make font selection within Corona a bit maddening. For iOS, at least, there is a website that's really helpful to let you know what fonts are available and what fonts are available according to the version of iOS and device. And so we'll head to our browser, and I've got already open iosfonts.com, 
And here, there is a list of fonts at the right that indicate the name of the font that you would use in Corona. So, for instance, if we wanted to use Baskerville, we would just type Baskerville instead of the American Typewriter Bold. If we wanted to use Baskerville Bold, we would type Baskerville-Bold, and so on. So anyhow, this particular list is really helpful for development for iOS. Now, of course, Corona is available on Android and Windows and all these other platforms. If you notice at the bottom left corner of the screen, there's a note that says Android uses Roboto and Windows Phone 7 uses Segoe. You can almost count on Android having Roboto as a font to use. I say almost because, remember, there isn't a single implementation of Android that is deployed across all these different Android devices. Instead, it's incredibly fragmented. So Roboto is available for Android, starting with Android 4, but not for pre-Android 4 versions. So you've got to be very careful there when you're deciding what font to use for Android or really for any other mobile platform except for iOS. And so just as we did with images, we created text really simply with just one line at line 19. And as well, we were able to change the font pretty flexibly with a declaration that allowed us to set the font to our preferred font, but then have a fallback via the OR keyword at line 18 that just in case that font wasn't available, we would fall back to the native font.